Welcome to the Whiteboard Doctor. For those who have been here before, welcome back. For those who have not visited our channel in the past, welcome too. Feel free to subscribe, leave some comments, leave some questions. We do our best to respond to each and every comment and question. We're a fairly new channel, thus we're just getting our footing, so we appreciate all the feedback we can get. Today is a session of 5-Minute EKG, and today's 5-Minute EKG will be an EKG demonstrating hypothermia. So this is the EKG from a patient that I actually saw in the hospital the other day. I'm not going to say anything more about that as I don't want to breach any patient confidentiality. Uh, but it is a real 12 lead EKG on a patient that was hypothermic. And just for your reference, their temperature during this EKG was 30 degrees Celsius. So when looking at EKGs of patients who are hypothermic, we look at a few things. I'm going to list them here to the left and then we will talk about our EKG and each one. So the first is bradycardia or bradydysrhythmias. These patients often have a slow ventricular and atrial rate. Sometimes that's sinus bradycardia, sometimes that's slow AFib, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in addition to that, we often get prolongation of intervals. That can be the PR, that can be QRS, that can be QT. And then the third, and this is the most kind of, I'm not going to say pathognomonic, because technically you can see in other conditions, but the, the one you hear most about, and that is Osborne waves, or elevated J points. I'm just going to do Osborne and then J. So for the sake of this discussion, we're going to focus on these three things. And then we're going to talk about our EKG and what we can see for each one of those. So first, we're going to talk about the rate being bradycardia. Uh, we have a previous 5-minute EKG episode on calculating rates in different ways. I'll link it up in the right corner here now. Uh, my favorite thing to do, though, is to count the number of R's in one of the full strips. So on this EKG, it's V1, 2, or V5. And we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 R's in this 10-second strip. So we can multiply that by 6. And for rate we have 42. So this patient's rate is 42. So they are bradycardic and they're in sinus brady. So this hypothermic patient, their rate is sinus bradycardic, which is consistent with a 12 lead EKG of someone who's hypothermic. So looking at rate, they're bradycardic. The second thing we looked at was prolongation. We have PR, QRS, and QT. Um, again, we have a five minute EKG video on calculating different intervals and segments. I'll link it in the top right corner if you have more questions. Um, but for the sake of this presentation, I will tell you that the PR interval is 174 normal. So here's our PR and it's normal, our QRS, is 96 and normal. So that's our QRS. And then our QT, which I'm going to go to the top, our QT, if you count the number of small boxes, it comes out to 602. So we have a prolonged QT. So that's number two, prolonged QT, which is consistent with this patient's hypothermia. So then we have this most well-known, uh, almost path mnemonic concept which is Osborne waves. I'm going to erase all this because this stuff is, you know, more straightforward and uh, easier to see on different EKGs. And then we're going to hone in on elevated J point. So what is a J point? A J point is the point at which the QRS terminates and the ST segment starts. So in AVL where you don't see an elevated J point, I'm just going to label the J point. So the J point is right here, right? It's this niche where the S wave ends and the ST segment starts, and that is our J point. So I'm going to put a little mark. It's right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. The J point in different conditions can be elevated, um, but hypothermia tends to be the condition we talk most about. So what is a J point elevation or a J wave or an Osborne wave? If we go down to lead three and AVF, we can see here you have this elevation right here. I'll put a square around the actual elevation. That is the J point popping up. I apologize for that noise. Let me mute my computer here. Um, the J point elevation is above the isoelectric line, which is this line here, right? And we see this J point peaking out above the isoelectric line. Right here. This is typically most prominent in the precordial leads. So the precordial leads being 
v1, v2, v3, v4, v5, and v6. And again, I'll link a, uh, one of our videos up in the top right corner on the different leads, limb leads versus pre-quarter leads, etc. if you have any questions on that. Um, but if we look at our J point in our precordial leads, uh, you can see starting in V3, I'll draw a line through the isoelectric line, you get this elevation. That'll trace all the way through, we have V4, V5, V6, and all these are J-point elevations. Now one might say, well is that actually an ST elevation? That's a really reasonable point. Um, I want to show you guys something though, um, because if you actually trace out the true isoelectric line going through, you get this J-point elevation here, but this ST segment returns pretty much down to the isoelectric line. Um, I can trace it down here as well. See that? The J point is elevated, but this ST segment here actually comes back down to the isoelectric line. So that is not ST elevations. That is just J point elevation or Osborne waves in the setting of hypothermia. These Osborne waves tend to be proportional to the degree of hypothermia in terms of how big they are. And again, this patient's temperature is 30 degrees centigrade, so they had a significant uh, J wave, although you can see more robust ones in patients who are more hypothermic. So the question is then, well, after this patient's temperature returned to normal, did they still have these findings? And I'm actually going to scroll down. This is an EKG several hours after the patient first presented, and it is after their temperature normalized. I'd like to point out a few things. One, their QT interval here is 462. So it actually normalized, and again, you can see that everywhere else, their QT interval shrunk back down to 462 with normal thermia. And then if we look through all those precordial leads, you see here you have no J-point elevation. But I'll scroll back up to the other one just so you can see the difference, right? And, ooh, this is actually a good picture here. We can see V5, and then I'll erase my marker, my mark on V5 so you can compare it directly. You can see V5 here, right, and you see that J-point elevation right here and then you can see v5 here and you see a complete normalization of that j point here so with normal thermia the patient's j point elevation or j wave or osborne wave normalized back down to the isoelectric line so in hypothermia on 12 lead ekg you often see bradycardia or bradyarrhythmias you see prolongation of your intervals pr qrs qt and you see these osborne waves or j waves which is that j point elevation above the isoelectric line uh, if any questions please leave them in the comments section we'll do our best to answer them any ideas for additional videos that you're hoping to hear uh, please leave them in the comments section any feedback as well subscribe if you want to follow along with us and please check out our other videos we have a lot of five minute ekg videos and we're working on producing videos on some other topics as well thank you for listening we appreciate your time and hope you all learn something as we tend to have a good day